Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in the world. I'm so honored to have you joining me for the webinar. So as we are waiting for people to filter in and join us for our time together, I am so excited to be talking to you about task management. So in the webinar chat box, go ahead and let me know what is your biggest pain point, irritation, annoyance when it comes to task management. And while you're over there, let me know where you're joining me from. I like to know where everyone is joining me and letting me know whether I need to be talking to people when it's like first thing in the morning, late at night. <laughs> so again, thank you so much for joining me for the webinar today. In the chat box, please, please, please just drop me a note and let me know where you're joining me from and what is your biggest pain point, irritation, all of the above when it comes to task management. If you've never done a Zoom webinar before, if this is your first time joining me, there is a button down at the bottom of the screen that allows you to pop open the chat box. So if you're not seeing it, go ahead and scroll over the screen. You'll see the word chat, click on that and it will pop open. During the webinar today, I will have the chat box open. I will also have the Q&A window open. So if you don't wanna share your question with everyone or you just wanna send a direct question, feel free to use the Q&A area of the chat. As I'm working through the presentation, if I can answer a question on the fly, on the go, I will, but have no fear, there will be time for questions at the end. So again, as we're waiting for everyone to join us here, let me know where you're joining me from and what your biggest irritation, pain point, or what have you is when it comes to task management. I love this. San Diego, California, Bay Area. Uh, Flagstaff, always showing up on my webinars. I love it when Flagstaff joins me. Makes me so envious because it's so hot down here in the Phoenix Valley and I think of the wonderful weather you're probably having up there up north in Arizona. Oregon, ugh, the rain. We're missing the rain this summer in Arizona. So please, please send your good vibes our way. All right, according to our official time clock, it is 11 a.m. here in Phoenix, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. So if uh, any of you don't know why you're here, we're here to talk about the task management cycle. All right, so for today, here's what we're gonna cover. We're gonna cover why we struggle with task management. We're going to walk through the different phases of the task management cycle, and I'm gonna give you insight into how I actually do all of my task management. All right, so if you don't know me, if we've never met, my name is Jennifer Lawrence. I am a productivity and systems expert and coach. I decided it was time to take everything I have learned and produce it for the masses because there is no big secret here into managing how we get things done and we overthink it. So I wanna help everyone strip it back down to their foundations and build really good habits. So I am wildly enthusiastic about personal and professional development. If you have any recommendations on books and resources, I always welcome them. And then of course, I am enthusiastic about all things Disney because I was born a Mouseketeer. All right, if you've ever been with me before, you know my philosophy when it comes to how we get work done. And that is that there's no best way to get work done just the best way for you. This is a mindset I want you to enter into this webinar with. Um, I want you to understand that I'm going to give you a lot of tips and tricks. These may not fit you. So in this particular webinar, it's a little bit different than ones that I've done in the past is I'm actually going to talk specifically about different tools and different apps. And I want you to use these through your filter of how you instinctually work. And we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. But just know that there is no one size fits all way to do work. And there's also no wrong way to do work. If somebody tells you that you shouldn't be handwriting out your to-do list, tell them to go pound sand because you can do it whatever way you wanna do it. Because the whole goal of task management is to make your life easier, not create more work for you and not make your life harder. So again, just remember we're looking for the best way for you. So let's get started. 
why do we struggle with task management? I love all of the annoyances that you guys have put into the chat box. Um, having multiple priorities versus having the priority for the day, prioritizing too many priority items. Someone sent me a message about, I just, it never ends. Like <laughs> my task list just never ends. And I'm sure we're all feeling that way right now. So one of the things I want to talk about is why we struggle with task management. And first and foremost is that we are underprepared for today's environment. When I think back to when I was taught how to keep track of my to do's and keep track of what was needed. I think back to when I was in middle school and they gave me that first paper agenda. Does anyone remember getting a paper agenda? And when I was in middle school, we were required to fill it out. We had to write down our homework and then our teacher had to actually sign off that we wrote everything down. So I was taught that everything I need to remember needs to be written down. It needs to be tracked on pen and paper. And then came like the digital revolution and suddenly I have more tools and options than I know what to do with. And it doesn't coincide with what I've been taught, how I've been trained. So now I'm at this crossroads where I need to decide, do I retrain myself to be digital or do I stick with what I know and what has worked with me, worked for me since I was a child? The other thing is, we, the, the tests never stop. In our electronic environment, there's constantly things to do, whether it's digital, whether it's home, whether it's work. We're now always connected with work. There is no just leave your work at work and come home. Like emails keep us connected, laptops keep, keep us connected. And at the time of this webinar, we're in the middle of COVID. So home and work are the same place. So we're just frankly underprepared for today's environment. The other thing is, is a lot of us are using what's trendy, right? How many of you see those articles that are like top 10 task management tools for 2020, which is kind of a joke this year, right? Um, but we're, we're looking at what's trendy, what's shiny, what's new, and but we're using the wrong tools. We're looking at what looks exciting. Um, and we're not really looking at what do we actually need? The other thing is, is this whole new like life hacks thing that has popped up and I, I blame Pinterest for this. Let's be real. As much as I love Pinterest, I blame Pinterest for the hacks. What we're looking for is quick fix. We want the quick fix. We want the, the let me, let me do these three things and then my life will be great. Right? Wrong. <laughs> so instead we need to be building habits and we're going to talk about all three of these areas today while we talk about the task management cycle. So here's the task management cycle. Yes, I made it up. <laughs> this is a combination of information and habits and behaviors that I have noticed over my 15 plus years of working with other people and keeping other people on task. When I was an executive assistant and project manager in a traditional world, my whole job was to keep people on task. And then when I started my virtual assistant business, guess what my job was? To keep people on task. And I found that there are three phases in the life cycle of a task and it is capturing it, organizing it, and prioritizing it. I didn't put the whole like and getting it done, crossing off the list in the cycle because Honestly, you've got to create a system that just keeps the information flowing. And once it's done, you get that nice, nice little gold star and satisfaction and it's off the list. So I wanted to make this a continual cycle. Um, as we dive into this, I want you to understand, I'm going to use the word system a lot. I'll probably use the word process. I don't want you to get overwhelmed by that idea. I don't want you to think that this is like some big whole thing that you're going to have to build and be overwhelmed by. When I talk system, all it means is that you have thoughtfully considered how this will work for you. That's a system. That's all it is. And the other thing is, is as we talk through the phases, please know that you don't have to have a different tool or solution for each phase. You can use the same tool and behaviors in each phase. Um, but you need to make that decision consciously. All of this is, is consciously designing a system that works for you to keep your tasks moving through the task cycle in a way that is organized and puts you in the seat of control. Because one of my biggest frustrations with task management is I feel like they just get out of control and then I'm a slave to my to-do list. Once I started thoughtfully designing my system, 
for doing my task management from capturing, organizing, prioritizing, I became those tasks boss. So this is what I want you to start doing. I want you to design a small system, it's personal to you, a custom curated system, how good does that sound, for you to take control of your tasks. Now, we all know what the top question I get when it comes to task management is, and that is, Jen, what's the best app for task management? So let's just get this out of the way. It's Trello. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> don't take me seriously. I want to talk about task management apps. We're going to go ahead and talk about that up front because I want you to have this in the back of your mind as we talk about the cycle. Looking for apps and tools is a lot like shopping for a car. And if you've joined me in other webinars, you've heard me say this multiple times. You don't go to a car dealership and say, I need a car because the dealer is going to ask you how many people need to fit in the car? What sort of activities are you going to use for the car? Do you prefer leather or cloth interiors? How many four or five, four, four or five wheel drive, four, four two wheel drive. Um, do you want in, in console navigation? Do you want Sirius XM built in? Do you need Bluetooth? And they start going through all the features and they start asking you questions about how you're going to use your car. You need to have that same level of consideration when it comes to your task management tool, but just like, don't make it like too big of a thing. Don't overthink it. So when you start thinking about implementing a task management app or tool, and when I say tool, I'm not talking about softwares. I'm talking about like pen and paper. Um, you need to first think about how you intend to use the app. Are you just looking for a dumping ground for your tasks? Are you looking for a robust tool that can help you collaborate with other people? Is this something that you're going to be using in the workplace and at home? You need to know the intention of the app in its life. What features do you need? You don't need it all. If you're not going to use it all, you don't need it all. The perfect example of this is there is a very robust task management app out there called monday.com. And I started using it with one of my virtual assistant clients and he wanted it because it was the greatest thing we've ever seen. I kid you not, you can build custom tables in it. You could do all this assignment, had all these integrations with Google and all these other different systems and you could build as many different boards as you wanted to and you could have all these different stylings. And we stopped using it after two months. Sometimes the most robust tools are the tools that become the most amount of work. I'm not saying don't go for the robust tool, but if you're going for the robust tool, make sure you know what you're going to use all of those features for and that the, those features are necessary. Those more robust task management tools are also going to be the ones that cost you money. So not only are you going to have to invest your time in setting them up and figuring everything out, you're now also making a financial investment, which is going to lead to guilt and stubbornness and all that. So just make sure when you're shopping for it, you're getting the features that you actually need, not the ones that are like, ooh, that's awesome. I wonder if I'll ever use that. And the last one is, guys, all task management tools do the exact same thing. We're going to say that again. They do the exact same thing. All of them are checklists. All of them let you set due dates. All of them let you apply labels and flags and colors. And all, they all do the same thing. So what interface is appealing to you? Do you need something that's just a simple checklist? Do you need something that has more visualization built in? Do you need things that allow you to drag and drop? Or do you want things that are more structured? What interface do you prefer to work in? How do you analytically look at things? If you're a data person, you may want something that resembles very similarly to Excel. That's cool. If you are a creative person or a creative visualizer, you may want something that looks more like post-its all over the wall or things that you can drag or drop. It's up to you what interface you like the most. So here <laughs> is just a list of apps and no joke, all I did was go to Google and I put in task management apps and I was overwhelmed. In fact, I didn't even have to scroll down the page of Google. These were listed across the top like they do when you're like searching for something and shopping options pop up. That's what came up. There are so many apps and this is one of the reasons why it is very important to identify 
what you actually need and how you prefer to work before you even jump into it because it's kind of like going shopping for that white SUV. Every car company has a white SUV. Every development company has some version of a task management app. So I wanna talk through just a few of these for you and I wanna highlight just a few task options. First and foremost, do not underestimate the power of your built-in apps. And when I talk about built-in apps, I'm talking about Outlook tasks, Google tasks. Uh, the iPhone has the Reminders app. And these are very bare bones, simple checklist task management tools that allow you to create due dates and flags. Um, most of them will connect to your calendar. So if you're just looking for a quick task management solution, you might consider one that's already built in and works with your system. Um, remember the milk is a new one to me. I don't know how new it is, but this one's pretty cool. It's a very simple, um, like checklist style. It, it's cute. Their mascot is a cow. Um, Microsoft has released Microsoft to do and Google has Google keep um, Google keep is a very visual tool. Um, so if you are one who likes to visualize a lot of things, Google keep may be your solution. Trello is my task management app of choice. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. I love Trello because it's a lot like putting post its up on the wall or out on a desk and you can easily drag and drop and move things around. Um, we talked briefly about monday.com and then there's even Evernote or OneNote. Um, both allow you to build checklists within them to keep track of your to-do. So if you are maybe not a pen and paper person, you wanna type things out, virtual notebooks are a great solution and they can go with you anywhere. And some considerations when it comes to selecting a task app. First and foremost, you may want to organize your stuff by your role. And when I say your role is we all wear multiple hats hats in our life, whether it is a parent, um, a manager in a workplace, maybe you have a side hustle, maybe you volunteer for a, a, com a community thing. Um, so when you are organizing your tasks and selecting a task management tool, maybe you want to organize by your role. So you need something that allows you to have multiple compartmentalized lists or boards or whatever their term is. Um, maybe you want to organize by projects. The other way to organize that actually feeds directly into successfully batch working is organizing your tasks by software and like tasks. So if you need to go to the, like we do this with grocery shopping, right? Like we know we need to buy all this stuff at the grocery store. So we put all of that on a list for the grocery store. You don't mix in your list with the grocery store for your list for the hardware store and the random stuff that you're going to decide to go buy at Target and then also the stuff that you're going to buy at the Etsy shop, you have like your list for the grocery store. So that's what I talk about with like softwares and like tasks. You may want to divide up your task management tool into how you actually need to get the work done. Um, the other idea is like when it comes to your organizational tools. So if you work in a contracting system or you work in a graphic design system, you may want to divide it up based on the actual output that's going to develop. The next option is accessibility. Do you need a cloud-based app? Do you want something that is housed on your phone? Or do you just want a notebook that you carry around with you? How accessible do you want your to-do list to be? Does it need to have a desktop app as well as a mobile app? Can you just go to a browser? Those sort of things actually matter. And I'm gonna talk a lot about that when I talk about why I chose Trello. Um, and then the last, but certainly not the least, and this is your biggest consideration is, what are your natural tendencies? How do you naturally like to put your information out there, whether it's out on paper or into a system, how much information do you need to actually include? Do you like checklists? Do you hate checklists? Do you, do you need colors or do you not need colors and flags? Do you like using prioritization buttons and rankings? Or do you like to just kind of organize based on what you choose to prioritize that day? All of that is going to affect the task management app that you select. And I want you to really take consideration of this. So, 
please, if you're not taking notes, that's fine. The webinar and will be posted on YouTube afterwards and you guys can watch it as many times as you want to. But also feel free to screenshot this. I'm gonna leave it up for about 30 more seconds so everybody can get their screenshot on. Um, but I want you to take these into consideration. And again, you'll notice that this is not really a laundry list. And as I was talking through this, you probably knew the answer to a lot of these bullet points of how you would wanna organize things, how you wanna see things, how you need to access the information. Um, and so we're going to talk about this deeper as we get into the cycle. So first phase of the cycle is capture. And this is actually when I was doing some market research and when I talked to my coaching clients, this is actually where everybody gets tripped up. I don't know how to capture everything that's coming on my to do list. <laughs> and so how do you capture what you need to get done? Go ahead and like drop a note in the chat box if you feel so inclined to share with everyone. But what is your natural response? If I were to say to you, by two o'clock tomorrow on Friday, you need to develop a task management cycle for yourself. What is your natural inclination of what to do with that information? Do you get out a pen and paper and jot it down really quick? Do you just grab a post-it and jot it down really quick? Do you open up, do you have a Word document open that you're just randomly typing information into? Do you have an Excel? Or do you have a task management tool that you already use and you're already have built somewhat of a habit of just typing and dumping information into there? All of those are typical methods of how to capture your tasks. The problem is that we run into is sometimes we'll just do whatever comes to us at that moment. And that's the habit that I want you to break. I want you to pick one method at a maximum two, but they have to be related. So, and the reason I allow you to have two is because if you are starting to institute a task app, but you hand write out things, you may wanna marry those two different versions of capturing together. But you need to develop a process of what you do with that list. And that's how the cycle starts to develop. So we're gonna focus right now just on capturing. Pick one way that works for you in designating that this needs to get done. Some common tools that are used for this are, like I said, pen and paper, pen and post-it notes, office software, notes apps, and even a task management app if you have one. Someone put in the chat box that they do pen and paper. Another said that they flag the request in Outlook to group all the things in their inbox. That's great because you're already, it creates a list for you, right? So make sure you're using this like one, this one option, and again, maximum two. And I'm gonna show, like I will demonstrate for you at the end why you may have, wanna have two different ways to capture, but why you need to make sure that you're doing it thoughtfully um, to make sure that the whole cycle doesn't break for you. So again, you need to pick one, one way to capture and make sure it all lands in the same place. So if you are somebody who does written lists, just get a notebook or a notepad that is your to-do notepad or list. If you like typing lists, whether it's in a virtual notebook like OneNote or Evernote or a Word document, make sure you're only using like one Word document or one digital notebook. Or if you're doing post-its, where do the post-its land? Do they all land on one board? Do they land in one section of your desk? Or do you put them into a notebook? Which sounds silly, but trust me, it works. It's a great way to wrangle information is if you're inclined to write on post-its and then just like stick it into a notebook so they don't go astray. But you need to have one landing place for your tasks. The next phase of the cycle is how do you organize your tasks? So this is where people are like, eh, I have a list, Jen. <laughs> You're like, okay, I get that. But sometimes our list can get a little squirrely. How do you make sure that everything you've captured now gets into a place where it is usable, where you can actually visualize everything that you need to get done. And this may sound a little strange for you because this may actually feel like it should be prioritizing. No, what I'm actually talking about is this is where your labels and your flags and your categorization and your due dates and all of that come into play. So with organizing, 
I used to be a handwritten only person. I had a notebook that I carried around everywhere with me and every morning I would write out my to-do list and at the end of the day I would rewrite my to-do list um, so that it would take out all the stuff that I did and then I can rearrange my priorities for the next day and then the next morning I would evaluate my priorities and then get to work. I started using rankings in there. So I would rank things one, two, three, and then also go all the way to 10. So if I finished one, two, and three, then I could address the rest of the list. So this is all handwritten methodologies, right? This is exactly what task management apps do for you. So if you're like, Jen, I'm not a handwritten person, this doesn't apply to me, it absolutely does because this is what a task management app is designed to do for you. So in a task management app, you would then actually reorganize them. There are some task management apps like OmniFocus, I think is one that does it, and um, Plan, um, the Plan app. They allow you to actually give it like a five star, four star, three star, and then it actually allows you to even designate how much time you think you'll need to spend on it, which is not a bad idea. Um, but then also like how do you categorize them? This goes back to thinking about how you intend to use a, a task management at, um, app and what roles you're going to put things in and what lists are you, going, are you going to put things in. How are you going to categorize everything together? Because during my workday, I don't necessarily need to see my home task list. So how do I want to organize it so that I still keep track of all my personal lists and all of my home lists? And I own, I own two businesses. Do I want all of those to be together? And how do I organize my tasks so that they land where they need to go? And what labels do I need to have? What labels are thoughtful and intentional and help me manage my tasks? Just gonna give you a little tip here. One of my favorite labels or flags for not only task management, but inbox management that I've ever used is the pending reply tag. This is like when you've sent out an email or when you've completed your portion of a task and you're waiting for feedback. And this allows you to just flag it because then you know you've done it and you're waiting on someone else. And then also being able to designate when you've done that flag so that if you need to follow up with people, that's my little tip for the day. So, and I always use the color yellow if you're interested. So how are you going to organize everything based on your hoard of tasks. So this is as if you got a pile of paper and there's a task on each one, what do you do with them then? Because when you have a capture function, when you have just a list of things, like the individual who said that they just flag things in their inbox, you just have a list. How do you know then how to organize it? I recommend if you're just building a list in Outlook, develop some categories um, using the category function in Outlook and in Gmail, it's your label function that would help you designate what's priority or what to do, or I don't really like the flags function in Outlook because um, it gets really bossy and starts turning my inbox red. <laughs> so, but if you like the flags and you want like the, it's due in two days and all of that, start using that and start using that to organize your tasks. So we talked about this. Um, some common tools for this is just use your original capture tool. You don't have to have an app or a function or tool to capture everything and then you have to move it over to a whole different app or system. If you've written everything out on paper, maybe you get a different set of pens and that's how you rank things. Or maybe you use highlighters to indicate what's your top priority for the day. Use what you're already using. Don't make it harder than it needs to be. And as we talked before, Every task management tool ever does this. They give you all of the very simple tools to do colors, even the ones that are built in to your systems. Have different little tools, whether it's categories, labels, flags. Um, I know the Apple Reminders app just has like the, the 10 different colors and it gives you all of the options to organize things, create multiple lists, move things around. So that's what we're talking about organizing. We're taking our pile of tasks, imagine it's like a pile of things and we're putting them into their buckets. And this is the one where people start losing their minds. <laughs> if we haven't been able to keep track of all the things and we haven't organized all the things, prioritizing becomes the impossible, but we're here to make the impossible possible. So you have your pile of tasks, you put them into buckets. Now, how do I know which one to address first? So if anybody has any tips about how they prioritize, please share it in the chat function, because I'm gonna share with you 
how I have traditionally seen it work with people, but I am constantly amazed at how people actually prioritize their work. Um, prioritization is an exercise that you should be doing every day. And I know that seems like a lot of work, but prioritization should be happening every day. And prioritization is a lot easier when you have the lay of the landscape, when you can see everything that's out there. The other thing is when you've reached this point in the cycle and you are prioritizing tasks and organizing them and you're in your task list in a way that is in a sense of control, it allows you to be more agile when those tasks come in from the side and they're like, hey, by the way, we need this today. You already know what priorities you are going to have to renegotiate. You already know what needs to be moved around and you already know what needs to possibly, you need to go back and say, hey, you're asking me for this today. This is also due today. Which one is it? Because I'm only one person and I only have two hands and there's only so much I can do. So prioritization is a tool that empowers you to get things done and keep your commitments and make sure it all gets done. And so Jen, get to the point, how the hell do you do it? Okay. One, don't overthink it. Set due dates and only set due dates for things that are within your reach or that have solid due dates. So when I say this, I don't mean go through your task list and arbitrarily assign due dates to everything because that will mean everything will get off your list. No. What I mean is that if you know something needs to get done by Wednesday, first and foremost, make sure you get it done by Wednesday. I don't recommend setting the due date for Wednesday. I recommend setting the due date for Tuesday. That way, if you have any delays, you have some flexibility. But don't go in there and be like, "There's this needs to get done, this needs to get done, and this needs to get done, and none of them have due dates, so I'm just going to stress myself out and make them all due tomorrow. If you don't have the time, if it's not a priority, if it's something that you can do as a time filler um, on your calendar, and I know a lot of you are like, what the hell is a time filler? I don't have free time on my calendar. I'll help you with that. Um, <laughs> if you are working your way through, make sure that you're using due dates that are intentional. The other great way to use due dates is with recurring tasks. Somebody mentioned this when I asked what is one of their base pain points, and they wish they could make tasks recurring. You can. In all task management apps, you can. Um, one of my biggest tips that I tell people is that if you schedule your to-dos into your calendar, you can set them as recurring tasks. You can also do this in a task management app. So you can set something to pop up once a week on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or once a month or once a year. I, in Trello, I have monthly tasks for my business that show just magically pop up in the last week of the month when I need to get them done. So you can set due dates that are thoughtful, that allow you to plan ahead, that don't necessarily um, force you to like ha manually manage them. That's what I'm getting at. The other way to prioritize again is to get back to those rankings. Just start ranking things, one, two, and three. Um, consciously selecting. This is something that sounds really fancy and all it is is sit down with your to-do list and pick your top three for the day. Don't pick more than three. Somebody's gonna tell you to pick five, don't pick five. Don't pick seven, don't pick 10. I don't know what you are, if you're superhuman, you can do 10 high priority things in one day. I wanna meet you and I wanna hug you from a social distance with mask on. Um, but I want you to consciously select your priorities every single day. And if this is something that you struggle with, this is why we schedule our to-dos because you can consciously select your priorities for the next day, block out the time on your calendar, and then that way you know what you need to get done the next day and you don't have what I call the decision-making gap. Once you get into the decision-making gap, um, you allow yourself to procrastinate. You allow yourself to consider all your options. Like <laughs> it's very similar to the difference between meal planning and going on the fly with dinner. And this is what scheduling your tasks actually does, does for you. And obviously I'm very hungry. We're coming up on lunch. But when you meal plan, you take the decision making out of every day, right? You're like, I know I'm doing this on Monday, this on Tuesday, this on Wednesday, this on Thursday. When you don't meal plan and it comes to meal time on Monday, you're like, hmm, what do I want? Well, I could eat this and I could eat that and I could eat this. And then you're making decisions 
that may not align with your goals or what you actually need to get done. So if your goal is to lose weight, you may not choose a healthy meal. If your goal is to save money, you may order out because that just seems easier. You're allowing yourself the space to make a decision. By scheduling your to-dos um, that align with your priorities, you're taking away that option for you to negotiate with yourself. <laughs> um, this also allows you the power to go back, like I said, when somebody swings in from the side and says, hey, I need this today, you can say, well, I don't have the capacity to do that today. Or, or you can say, I can move this one thing here, so I'll make space for you today. And you can consciously make the decision to move something to another day. Um, and so again, that gets up to my last, I didn't even look at the last bullet point, scheduling your to-dos. Um, but consciously selecting is actually a really good tool. I used to do this every morning when I would look at my task list and I would say, okay, here's one, two, and three. And I, that's all I would do is I would just write on the piece of paper, one, two, and three. You can do this in a task management system just by starring them. You could add a one, a two, and a three to the actual typed in list and then sort alphabetically so they pop up to the top of your list. You can drag and drop them if you want to. You could create a whole separate list and move them to your top priorities of the day. I believe Asana has that built in based on your due date. Um, it will automatically tell you what your priorities are and some of us need that bossing around. Um, like I said, plan allows you to set a ranking of your priority. So all of those will automatically pop to the top for you. Um, I personally like the control of selecting my priorities. If you are somebody who works better at just taking yourself out of the equation, maybe you're the problem. Um, I would suggest looking into an app that specifically helps with prioritization, but please know it is going to require a little bit more input from you to use those apps successfully. That's not going to be as simple as just making a checklist or flagging something a certain color. You are going to have to input a little bit of data. But again, if that is going to help you actually be in control, then I 100% encourage it. So again, we already talked about a lot of these tools. Um, your original capture tool, again, going all the way back to the beginning of the cycle, if you didn't need to implement a new tool or a new app to do the organizing, you certainly don't need to do it for the prioritizing. Um, your task management app or digital or physical calendars, this whole scheduling your top priorities, that works in a physical calendar too. If you are somebody who really likes carrying around a planner or um, some sort of like calendar on your desk, um, I actually really like the idea. I don't do it, but I think it's a cool idea to get one of those the giant, giant calendar things and putting it on your desk and jotting down your top three priorities for each day. Um, that would be a great way to keep yourself focused because every time you look down, assuming that you're going to look down to look at your phone or something like that, you'll see your priority for the day just glaring you in the face. All right. So I want to talk about pivoting. Um, first and foremost, um, you, you're not tied to this. And the other thing is that you don't need to overhaul. You don't need to, this is certainly during this time is not the time to overhaul everything you're doing, but we want to build habits over time. So if you are getting stuck in the capture phase for the next two weeks, just focus on getting all of your tasks into one place, using one method to write it down, using one place where you go to put everything into. Um, and then maybe the next two weeks, you then work on organizing. Maybe you think through what colors you want to flag things with, what lists you want to put things into. And then for the next two weeks after that, you start all your captured stuff goes into a certain list. Um, small little tweaks are going to make a big difference. So I don't want you to get off of this webinar and be like, okay, time to do an overhaul. I'm going to redo all of this. I want you to build little habits over time and start with your biggest pain point. If it's prioritizing, if you're like, I got to get better at prioritizing, try to identify the best technique for you to actually go through the selection process. And maybe that is just starting tomorrow, every morning, picking your top three of the day. And then in like a week, you'll work on making sure that all your tasks are in one place. Whatever works for you, address your biggest pain point first. Don't be afraid to change what isn't working. I'm all about the evaluate and adjust. So if you download an app and you get into it and you get like two months into it and you're like, oh, this is so much more work than it needs to be, stop using the app. There's a big difference between stubbornness and discipline. And discipline is sticking with something that gets you to a certain goal. 
stubbornness is sticking with methods that are working against getting you to a certain goal. So when it comes to looking at what you are currently doing or what you're looking to try and implement, if there's one thing to like try and see if it works out, but if it starts feeling like more work and it's taking you away from your goal or it doesn't feel easy, you've chosen the wrong path and it's okay for you to just go back and be like, eh, I'm going to do something else. And finally, create a backup plan for overwhelm. I'm willing to bet most of us do not operate the same way during stress and overwhelm as we would typically behave under normal daily circumstances. Um, we all know this. We've all, the, the best example of this is the way we argue with our partners. <laughs> um, when things are, you know, a normal everyday sort of thing and somebody irritates us, we go, yo, knock it off. That's really obnoxious when we are stressed and we're overwhelmed, the volume on that statement might go up a little bit. This is the same when it comes to how you work. So when you get into a state of overwhelm, what is a, an activity or a default setting that is going to help you keep moving forward? I'm going to talk about what mine is and maybe I'll jog your, your ideas um, in the next slide. So, but I want you to think about, you don't have to stick to your design system in a moment that calls for an alternative, especially when you're spiraling or you're feeling out of control. Okay. So here's my system. This is the first time I'm ever talking about how I manage my tasks publicly, just so you guys know. Okay, here we go. My capture, I actually use two. Um, I jot it down in my notebook. So I have a notebook that I carry with me everywhere. I kid you not, my husband even knows it goes to the bedroom with us at night. This is my capture notebook. This is my default setting when I get a task or when something comes to mind, I'm like, ooh, I can't forget to do that, is actually to handwrite it out. So I found that I was writing on post-its and scrap pieces of paper and you know notepads that were around. And so my first level of training was to just get a notebook and what I started doing is all of those stray pieces of paper that were everywhere, I started taping them into my notebook. So everything was landing into one place. Um, and now I just, it's a default for me to carry this everywhere with me. And so I just pop it open and I jot it down real quick. I do use Trello to manage all of my tasks. And occasionally I think, huh, I need to remember to do that. And my hand is already on my phone. This is really honestly the only way that it works is that the phone's already in my hand and I'm like, oh, and I pop open the Trello app really quick and I jot it down and put it where it needs to go. That is the only time it works that way. I kid you not. I have the Trello app on my desktop and I still don't default think to like, oh, I need to add that to Trello real quick. It always is write it down and then put it into Trello. And that's where the gap has to be closed for a lot of people is I handwrite things out. And then I, whenever I get a break throughout the day, I take whatever I've handwritten down and put it into Trello where it belongs. So I either do that whenever I get five minutes, but at the very least, it is my last activity of the day. It's actually scheduled into my calendar is organize your tasks. And so I will go in and I'll reset due dates. I'll look at the next day, make sure everything's still according to plan. So in Trello, I have two separate lists or boards. Sorry, if you're unfamiliar with Trello, there are, they work in boards. Um, and then each board has lists and then cards. Um, I have a personal board and I have a work board and then I have another board for my other business. Um, and within them, all the lists are broken down. In my business, they're broken down by clients and then also general tasks. In my personal life, it's pretty robust. There's, it's broken down by what we need. That's actually where we build our grocery list. I share it with my husband and when he's like, hey, I need Gatorade, he puts it on there and I know when I need to go shopping, it's all right there. So we don't even use a separate um, grocery shopping app, which we used to have. We used to use the Cozy app, which is also another great um, task management tool. It's put out by Real Simple, it's really great. Um, but we used to have these two different apps. So I just created a list in Trello and that's how we gather our, our grocery list, which is great. Um, and then I have like personal tasks that are like one-off tasks. We have household projects. We have planning for upcoming events, all of that. 
is built into my personal board. So we use a lot of um, different cards and lists. The reason why I love Trello is because the interface is, uses drag and drop. So I can easily move cards around. I can change the color of cards now, which is great. Um, and then I can build checklists directly into the card. And one of the best things about it is I can see the status of the cards checklist on the outside. So I don't have to click it open and see how many tasks I have left to do. I don't have to click it open to see the due date. Um, I've been using Trello for, oh gosh, like 10 years. Um, and it's one of my favorite tools. And it's the one that when I would go and chase those trendy, shiny objects, I always came back to Trello. So it really does speak to my natural instincts of how I want to visualize things, how I organize things, how I prefer to customize my app. Um, Trello is also one of the ones that you can the most highly customizable ones. Um, your boards can look however you want to. So that's why I use Trello. It's not a sales pitch for Trello, I promise you. I'm just helping you understand. <laughs> um, and then finally, when I prioritize, I schedule it into my calendar. Um, so I actually do use three different tools to get me through the cycle. Like I said, you don't have to do it that way. You can stick with one tool all the way through to get you from capture, organize, prioritize. It just depends on how you wanna use it. When I organize in Trello, I, I set due dates, but I don't necessarily live and die by the due dates. I live and die by what has filtered, what I've put into my calendar as a priority for that day. So um, I use due dates as like guideposts. They're kind of like my guardrails on the road, but they're not necessarily my live and die by because that's way too much stress for me. Um, my days are a little bit too, too flexible um, when it comes to what needs to get done that day to stick by my bossy task management tool. Um, and then also I've identified in under stress, my default setting is pen and paper. So I like to do a brain dump when I get overwhelmed. I will also even just have my task management tool open and I'll hand write everything out so I can see the lay of the land. And then I go back to my traditional using different pens and highlighters to rank things, group things. Um, and then maybe I go back to my task management tool and rearrange everything based on what I drew out. But what that allows me to do is see the full lay of the land and have a hand in actually doing it. It feels like a real action as opposed to like putting things into Trello and moving it around. That doesn't feel good for me. I'm not a big digital person. I am a handwritten person. That is my task management tool. I capture in my notebook, I organize in Trello, and I prioritize in my calendar. When you walk away from this, you want to be thoughtful enough about how this actually plays out for you. So maybe your capture is you write it in a to-do list in your planner, and then you organize that list simply by using a different color pen. Um, and then you prioritize by writing a due date next to it. Done. You didn't use multiple tools. You can even just get a cheap notebook from the store. You don't even have to have a fancy notebook and you've created a full task management system and stick to that system. You don't have to do it any other way. Another great way to do this is build it into an Excel document. A lot of people underestimate the power of Excel. You can type everything straight into the Excel, create a due date. Um, if you build it in Google Sheets, they have a check button. So you can just insert a check button and check it off. Um, so use the tool that works for you. Use the tool that's accessible. Use the tool that if you said, I need to jot this down, where would it go? All right, so does anyone have any questions? And again, I've added the list of apps that I've mentioned um, over here on the side of the screen. If you're still looking for some inspiration, if there are some that you want to research, if you, you know, whatever you want to do, if you want to look into it. Again, I do warn you that if you put it into Google, you are going to become overwhelmed with options. And that's part of the problem. So don't spend too much time on the actual app selection part spend more time on identifying the different features that you need. Um, Krista asked is if will the recording of this webinar um, be available outside? Yes. Again, um, you guys will get an email after afterward when it's ready and up on YouTube so that you can watch it whenever you would like. Any questions? None. Cool. All right. So any of you who have been around know that I do productivity coaching, and this is actually something we work on in one-on-one. -on -one. So if you are interested, I can help you build your productivity profile and your task management system. Um, it involves taking an assessment that is actually going to assess how you naturally work. What are your instincts? How do you prefer to do things? It is not a personality assessment. It is actually an assessment on how you work. 
Um, and then what we do is we tie that to your personal task and uh, task management and time management system. And we develop your productivity cycle so that you are getting more done without, uh, you know, putting in more work, which it, wouldn't that be delightful. Um, that being said, I would love to connect with all of you and I am everywhere. Um, I am a true millennial. So I am on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, Pinterest. I just started ramping up my Pinterest page. If you want to join me there, I am on YouTube. So please, please, please feel free to visit me anywhere you, you prefer to connect. Again, you don't have to be everywhere. The only place I am not on is TikTok. <laughs> so um, also I am starting to release free, not free courses, free webinars every month. And then there are now paid on demand courses that are going to be popping up in my course library on my website. So if that is something you are interested in, please make sure you are signed up for my mailing list and you can sign up quickly by going to jenlawrence.co and signing up. Um, and that will get you all of the information about the different courses that are popping up to help you with this. So that being said, I look forward to connecting with all of you outside of the webinar world, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Again, hit me up with any questions you have.